I, 46 male, was married to my wife, 48 female, for 16 years. We first met on a boat during a party hosted by her parents. Even though they really wanted grandkids, they did not like me. So our relationship was basically supported by them ignoring us. I honestly felt like she was everything I could wanted in a lifelong partner. We got married and had three kids together. Understandably, my wife gained some weight. By the time our youngest was six years old, my wife was 275 pounds. After having three kids and being married 16 years, it's not hard to believe. My wife joined a gym full of determination one New Year's Day to get her old body back. Over the course of nearly two years, she worked with one trainer in particular. I knew she was working one-on-one -on -one with a trainer, but she told me it was a woman. My wife got down to 150 pounds. She looked amazing, and her confidence was soaring. Her parents watched our kids whenever she asked, but surprisingly, after her weight loss, we only went on a few dates. Since it had been a while since we went out, and she was down to 150, I thought it would be nice to celebrate. My reasoning was that my wife didn't want to bother her parents too much for dates, but I knew how much they loved our kids. So, even though they didn't like me very much and my wife usually did all the communicating with them, I decided to call and ask them to watch the kids for us that very night. My MIL was confused and told me that they already babysat the children several times this month. I asked when, and she hardly had the patience to recap with me, because she assumed I already knew about this. It came to light that my wife was dropping the kids off at their house whenever she went out with them, and during times when we both should have been at work. I thought of specific times over the past several months, when she told me they were going to the park, shopping, or just out, and I trusted her. Now that I knew she was lying, I confronted her as soon as she came in the door. She became flustered and said her mother must have been mistaken because she never lied to me. I tried to get any bit of truth out of her, but it only made her mad until she left the house alone. I did some sleuthing and found one of my wife's closest friends, Melissa, on the internet. She replied to my message of concern, admitting that my wife told her about another man. The trainer that my wife claimed was a woman was not. She told Melissa that about three months after she met her trainer, he started complimenting her and said he enjoyed their time together. That's when he got her attention and they started their emotional affair. Melissa was sworn to secrecy, but not for my sake. For my in-laws and my wife's sake, whose lives would become much worse if they didn't get to see the children whenever they wanted. I was devastated. I asked if this affair became physical, but Melissa didn't know that. I called my best friend of 20 years. Since my parents died and I was an only child, I needed his help. He never had children and it had been three years since I spoke to him. He was successful and trustworthy and agreed to watch my kids for me to help me through this mess. I went to the gym and found AP. I started yelling at him, accusing him of starting a relationship with my wife. He seemed extremely guilty and worried that I was causing a scene. He didn't know what to say to make this better, because there wasn't anything that could have helped. I started screaming in frustration, with the past 16 years of my life and my children's faces flashing before my eyes. The gym owner quickly rushed over within a minute. At least 30 people watched, eyes bugging out of their heads as this stranger tried to calm me down. We got into the security room with all the cameras, where I calmed down and explained the drama that concerned his employee. Together, we looked through camera footage of her visits with AP. It didn't take long at all to find footage of him touching and rubbing her when he assumed they were out of camera view. I hated seeing it. I hated that my wife didn't smack him across the face. The gym owner stepped out of the room to fire AP immediately, and then he begged me to leave his business out of this completely. He gave me a hard copy of the incriminating video clips, and I drove back to my friend's house in a daze. We hung out with the kids together until they went to bed. I talked his ear off, and he helped me to find hope in the future just before my wife called, crying. She already knew AP was fired, and I knew everything, so she begged me to forgive her. I told her to move in with AP. She said she couldn't, but wouldn't tell me why. She didn't say she wouldn't, she said she couldn't, because AP told her they were done. He was too worried about having to start his career over again, and whatever bad reputation I could stick on him for touching my wife in the gym.
She freaked out after I told her she couldn't move back in with me or her parents. I hung up on her and called to tell them everything. They didn't want to believe it, but they didn't want to see my video evidence either. They told me they would make their own decision after our divorce was final. Well, after the hearings, it was ordered that I take primary custody of our children, the house, a little alimony, and child support payment from my ex-wife. Her parents were beside themselves. They couldn't look her in the eye, and I know for a fact that they no longer speak to her. I still let them have visits with the children, but it isn't often. Right before the divorce was final, my ex tried begging for our life back. She said without me and our three kids, everything in life is pointless. I still divorced her after 16 years. The hardest part was that she never admitted to having sex with him. She just wanted me to believe it was occasional inappropriate touching and maybe a few flirtatious texts. So I guess she expects me to believe that all the times she had her parents watch the kids over the past two years, she never slept with AP. I'm not stupid. OP, it makes me sad to hear this. Your wife's newfound confidence should have been a gift to you. To inspire your relationship after having three children and being together for 16 years, she let this man she hardly knew flatter her and touch her, in public. You can be sure she would have cheated on you until you found out somehow, or she secured her place in AP's life to where she could move in with him. It's a relief to me that you called her mom and found out about her dropping off the kids. Thank goodness you discovered the truth and got away from this woman. It's great that she owes you money each month because you and the children deserve it. As a mother and wife, she abandoned and betrayed the four of you. She'll certainly have a hard time recovering from this. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Stay strong. Let's now get into our second story for today. I, 33 male, partnered with my best friend, Stephen, to open a shop in Savannah, Georgia. It grew bigger than either of us even anticipated. We had a great time for about two years. Within that time, I married my wife, 29 female. She was a frequent customer at our store and asked me for a job. We fell in love and Stephen supported our relationship. She became a trusted part of the business, but was the first to give up on it when COVID hit. A shutdown was ordered and we were forced to close up shop. My wife took no time at all to suggest I start looking for a new career. I was shocked and disheartened. I wanted us to support each other and share hope that our store would reopen within a few months. My wife was the first to get a new job. She was working while I procrastinated about getting a job anywhere else. So many businesses were closed, my only options were a super crowded grocery store, super crowded warehouse, or a food delivery driver for the restaurants that stayed open to offer takeout. I didn't want to do these things, and if COVID was such a danger, I didn't want my wife to work either. I told her we could probably survive off our savings for a while if she wanted to quit her job, but she refused and nagged me about getting to work. This put a strain on our relationship, even though I tried to make it up to her by keeping the house super clean. Four months later, the restrictions were still in place. One day, my wife told me she was working a delivery shift. I went to the grocery store to pick up what I could with what was left of our stimulus check. The money from that check disappeared faster than any other money I had in my account. It didn't help us to survive more than a month. Despite my wife delivering food orders all over the area, our savings were diminishing as well. I got home and started unloading the groceries. I had to walk past my neighbor's door, and the curtain covering the large window into his living room was pretty thin. You could even see the entryway into his bedroom and half of his bed. Once I saw him lounging on the couch naked, having no idea that the curtain was practically see-through. For that reason, I didn't look at his door and turned my head away for the first trip from the car. On the second trip, I noticed two shapes out the corner of my eye, which made my head turn. I could see him and a woman. I looked closer, and I could tell it was my wife. They were making out on his couch. I couldn't believe my eyes. It felt like the world fell away, and it was all a dream. I knocked as hard as I could on the door, dropping the groceries. They both stopped, and my wife pushed her face into the couch. She realized it was me. The neighbor, now clearly AP, hesitated to open the door. I didn't back off. I noticed a food delivery bag sitting on the table, and I could hardly believe it. I just wondered, was this just a spur-of-the-moment thing? 
Was my wife going to come out? What was he thinking? Finally, he opened the door, saying right away that he didn't want any trouble. I asked if his guest was my wife, and he said he didn't know, but I'd just have to wait until she felt safe to come out. My head was pounding. I was so mad that he was telling me what to do. I went back in the house and threw the groceries into the fridge. I waited outside his door for a little while, but then I searched the area for my wife's car. She parked pretty far away from his house, as if she knew she was going to be here a while, and didn't want me to see her car. When she finally came out to speak with me, she was extremely embarrassed and didn't know what she could say. I could feel the anger rising from my toes. I cut straight to the worst case scenario, by asking her if she slept with him because she thought I was failing her as a provider. She was shocked at the question, probably because it was exactly right, but she denied that. She said it was a spontaneous decision to make out with him because she'd seen him around and the COVID lockdown was stressing her out. I told her even that was unacceptable. I told her she lost faith in me and the business and cheated on me just five months after shutdown. She just tried to deny cheating on me, said she only made out with him. I asked her why she didn't just dump me if she felt like making out with other men or entering another man's house without telling me. I told her I wished she would have just talked to me, but then she said she tried to tell me she did talk to me by begging me to get a job. I told her that wasn't the talk we needed to have, and she probably wouldn't be able to understand what I meant. I was afraid of filing for divorce because she said she was only kissing him and I didn't want to lose my wife after just four years of marriage. She was my world, so I told her to move out while I cleared my head and thought things over. She agreed because she didn't want me to leave her. Denying and pushing her away was difficult, even with her betrayal. I decided to seek revenge on the stupid neighbor. He knew this woman was my wife, but he still took her inside and kissed her. It was easy to find his social media profiles and discover that he had his own girlfriend who was long distance. I wasted no time sending her a message about everything. She believed me and stopped talking to him immediately. I found out where AP worked and made several anonymous complaints and bad reviews about him and the business over time. He was fired after six months. He basically never left his house again. I don't really know what happened, but I never encountered him again. I noticed a thicker black curtain on his door. He stopped contacting my wife completely, so her texts and phone calls to me, begging for mercy and forgiveness, became more frequent. It didn't get to me at all. After the separation, I became certain I wanted her to be my ex, and nothing more. After just a few months of drastic life change, she went into another man's apartment, after telling me she was working. That's enough for me to lose faith in her completely. There are too many good girls out there looking for a stable man. I know I'll find a worthy bachelorette that appreciates and respects me. Since all this happened, I've reopened my business with Steven. With his help, we had just enough savings to get it back up and running. Update. My wife started visiting the business again as a frequent customer, just like how we met the first time. I've completely ignored her and refused to acknowledge her existence. Steven knows this, so he always handles her orders and never tells her a word about me or how I'm doing. OP, you definitely made the right decision to cut her out of your life. It's extremely wise to at least separate from a spouse for a while after any kind of betrayal to clear your head and figure out how you're going to handle it. She proved herself to be a very poor quality woman. She lost faith in you and grew impatient. There's no excuse for her to lie and make out with someone. As a married couple, the both of you should have been able to work together in understanding and communication to get through this time. It's as if she completely turned on you and only wanted to boss you around. She probably thought she was more responsible than you by getting a job, but then she just used it as a cover-up to cheat on you. I am relieved you left her. It's wonderful that you and your friend saved the business as well and that you've managed to stay away from this woman no matter what. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, comment below with your thoughts on what happened. Take care.